morning, friends, if you can hear me. There's probably a lot of wind coming across that camera microphone, but we're going to try to do something anyway. We're here in Island Pond, Vermont, at a vintage snowmobile show. This is the third annual vintage snowmobile show put on by the Kingdom Grill in Island Pond, Vermont. And we're about to go live here. Get some sleds. And here we go. We're at the end of the line. Now we're just going to walk up the line and if we catch people for an interview, we will. If not, we'll just go up the whole line and down the other line on the other side. As you can see, there's sleds over there and somebody brought a groomer in. But uh, yeah, we'll just walk around. I think I see somebody I know over here. Is this Ray Lacasse? Hey, Mike, how you doing? Hey, finally we meet. Good to meet you, yeah. This is wonderful. How's it going? Good, how about yourself? Good, good. Finally put a face to you. Finally, yeah, this yeah. is wonderful. Only on a computer before. It's true. <laughs> it was, it's funny because we've known each other probably like three years now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, know each other quite well. And then, you know, to finally meet in person is just a real treat. Yeah, I mean, it's been fun to be on the podcast before. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of fun with that, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And do I understand you brought some sleds here today? We did. We did. I've got my 76 Volvo uh, TX. Here we go. Uh, been restored uh, pretty much 100%. Not quite, probably about 90%. But we got that. Uh, i got a friend of mine who's got the... 78 SRX uh, with the pogo sticks on the front. Yeah. And I brought a 78 uh, Exciter with me. Nice. And Amon brought his uh, Panther. The Rump guy brought a Panther. Yeah. We got to pick on him on the way home. We do. <laughs> <laughs> and then for people who watch the podcast, this is Armin Buto who's on always making comments to us. Yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is an awesome but, show. Yeah. Yeah. This is a nice turnout. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Cool deal. And uh, these guys came in from Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, by the way. And then you had another friend with you too. I don't yeah, know. He's getting a coffee. Yeah. Here I am with no gloves on taking pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I'll send you some of these pictures later. Please so. do, yeah. yeah. And if you have a chance, if you have any pictures or, Im or uh, video from your Pittsburgh show. Yeah. I'll in fact, those to you, yeah. Do you want to do a quick shameless post show plug on, yeah, on the show? Yeah, well, we just had our uh, Pittsburgh uh, uh, vintage ride uh, a couple of weeks ago, March 4th. And we have a, uh, a vintage show coming up in September, September 16th, I believe. Um, be our second annual, and uh, we're looking forward to having a lot of people here this year. A lot of people I've talked to here look like they're going to come over, so it should be a good time, and Armin helps me a lot with this, and um, yeah, we're going to have a good time. Great. Wonderful. Oh, and this is Wayne, also from Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. Yes. How you doing, Wayne? Right. Nice yeah, to see you. The SRX. Oh, yes, yeah, he's got the SRX right here, yeah? Yeah. Nice. All the way from Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. Cool deal. And we're live right now on Facebook and YouTube, going out to eight different places. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very sure cool. They, they don't get it on it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We're yeah. We're near both sides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't want our picture on the wall. <laughs> oh, that cool. cool. It is. <laughs> well, cool. I'll let you keep photographing, right. and I'm going to do some more of my own, too, but we'll, we'll circle back. All right, Mike. Good cool. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you. Thank you. That's the way to do it right there, right out of the wind. Nice. I am Bhutan, 1965 Husky. Got a custom fuel cell. I don't know if that's for show or if that's functional, but pretty cool. How you doing? Good.
Now, this might be the one that won Best in Show in Lancaster last year, but I'm not positive. It was one set very similar to this. Let me see. Yeah, Tim Sterner. I think this is the one. It's a 1965. I believe this is the one that won Best in Show in Lancaster last year. So, Serge Marco, 1972 Scorpion Stinger 3. We had neighbors with one of these back in the day. We used to ride with them a lot. That might be a custom seat. That might be a nice fisherman special, but I'm not sure. Good, how are you? I like, uh, they got water skis, old water skis on the back of there. That's a nice touch. How you doing? I think so. Yeah, nice to see you. Yeah. These are yours. Nice. Do you feel like talking them up? Or? Oh, just whatever the bag. Like you're telling a friend about it. Oh, all right. I guess I can do that. So this is my ninety. Or an enemy. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, this is my 95 Formula Z. Uh, I bought it when I was 13 years old. I actually shoveled horse manure all summer to save up and buy it. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, I've had it for a while. It's, uh, it kind of has a little story. I actually almost burnt to the ground in the White Mountains a few winters ago. And uh, we were able to save it, place a bunch of parts. So, I still love that red color. That's what sold me on it when I bought it. It does pop, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Very cool. Yeah, it's a nice sled. I've always liked it. It's uh, kind of a time capsule. It's it's all original, not restored. I mean, a few different parts here and there to keep it going. But now, Sled Victory Vermont. Anything going on with that we should know about? Or? Uh, so the Sled Victory Vermont is actually a, just a sticker my brother-in-law made. Sure. Uh, he has a camp in Victory Vermont, and he made all these stickers and just gamed everyone to come up to the camp and ride. So, Sweet. Yeah. So pretty cool. Nice. And uh, let's see. And it's Justin Fafford then, right? Uh, Fafford. Yep. Fafford. All right. Yep. Sorry about that. No worries. Cool. Cool. And this is yours or his? Uh, or? Yeah, it's kind of the family. It's my wife. So yeah. I my wife when these guys were little. Yeah. I used to ride on that when he was a year old up in Pittsburgh and all wow. around. Yeah. We've, uh, it's kind of, you know, I mean, I'm representing it today, but it's kind of a family sled. My mom used to ride it. And uh, we used to ride Pittsburgh when I was a kid. I used to always ride on it with her all over the place. Wow. Um, so it, it was in our family. And then it ended up going away for a while. We brought it back. We knew the people who had it. And uh, put some work into it. Just trying to make it a nicer sled piece by piece. So, Sweet. Yeah, this this one's truly my favorite out of every sled I have. Yeah. So, if I could pick one sled to restore from the ground up, it would be this one. Yeah, so, so many memories with that sled. Oh, yeah, and it's just a classic old wet chest. And True, yeah. You go, someone said, oh, I had one, you know, yep. I had an 88 or an 89. Oh, yeah, had one of those. For sure. Yep. And that, that front end, I think, redefined handling in many ways. Yeah, at yep. the time. <laughs> yeah, at the time, yeah. For sure. Now, when I saw you guys in Lancaster, did I give you guys DVDs? Yes, uh, yeah, I did. All right, so yep, you got yep, you're covered. Yep, yep, cool. Yep, yep, All right, yep, good. Yep, yep. Cool deal. Yep. I like. Is this yours too? Or? Uh, oh, I wish. That's a pretty sled. A yeah, I like that retro color scheme. Yeah, it's we're trying to figure out what it was. The guy you dropped off, I haven't seen him, but a lot yeah. of people are like, what is that? Because I've never seen one like that. It's really nice color. Yeah, yeah, I love the ski to color. Yeah, it harkens back to like around 1980 or so. 80s, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's a beauty. That was a beautiful color scheme back then. Yep. Yep. And now, you know, it, fit, it works on this, the too. New, the new ski is uh, so, rare. Yeah. Cool deal. Well, cool. I'm going to keep on going, but it's yeah. nice talking to you guys. Nice you. All right. Take care, man. Yeah, very cool. Let's see. Oh, this is for sale, too, by the way. It's from Connecticut. Roger Cranmus, I think. The 96 ski -Doo Formula STX LT. I do like that paint scheme. You shouldn't have a hard time finding a buyer for that. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Now, in case you're just joining us, we're here in Island Pond, Vermont, at a vintage snowmobile show. Having a grand old time. And uh, these are some of the Bristol sleds here. These two cats, this uh, 650, the EXT, is in a new acquisition for the family. And uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to catch up with them today for some comments, but at some point we will. 
So Emmett Bristol's sled this is a 73 Arctic Cat Formula 2. This sled wins a lot of trophies, as you could imagine. Come around here for a better look. That EXT is a looker. And of course, we got Ray Barreto's Rups over here. He's a serious Rup collector. So this is a 76 Rup Magnum 440. This is a 74 Rup Rebel Free Air. It's a concept slot. My environment looks very detailed, but it's such a an ass fucking thing. But I hate that thing. This is raised as well. This is a 75 Rub Nitro Free Air. Yeah, sweet looking sleds. Look at the old Moto Ski. Eric Sydney, maybe? I don't know if I'm reading that right. It's a MS 18 Moto Ski 1968. Nice for 300. So it's 1982. Tyler Briggs making vintage great again. Absolutely. How are you doing today? Good, good. We're live on Facebook and YouTube. Do you feel like talking to sleds up? Or? No? Okay. That's all right. Well, I got something for you, though. Got a free DVD in the NAMS oil catalog. Should be two, yeah. One for each of you there. Thank you. Sure. Cool deal. Is this what, 73, 74? 74, yeah. Nice. Oh, yes, okay. Cool. Yeah, I remember these from back in the day. Bad Influence Power Sports. This is a 72 Olympic Chris Wood. Another TNT. This is 78. And so. Save from a dumpster is 78. It looks more like a 73 or 74, but I don't know. Very nice. Is this yours? Or? This? Okay. <laughs> so you don't want to talk about? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Really? Wow, so they asked you to help them put it in a dumpster and you rescued it. Yep. Wow. Good thing you did. Really? That's amazing. Wow, well, their loss is your gain. That's cool, man. Well, thank you. Great story. And we got Mark Bristol's slides over here. So just about everything on this sled that can be powder coated is powder coated. And that's what Mark Bristol does for his business. He's got a powder coating business, performance powder coating in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Uh, let's see, it's going closer here. This is a 1980 Kawasaki Drifter Free Air. And it was originally blue like you see in the image here. But uh, he painted it a uh, shade of Kawasaki green. And like I said, pretty much everything on this thing that can be powder coated has been powder coated. We're talking the skis, I think the shocks, uh, the handlebars, the grab rail in the back. And there's also his uh, Puma over there. Uh, both of these sleds have appeared in my videos many times, but they're always a treat to see. I was talking to him earlier. Maybe we'll get him on camera here as we get a chance.
71 Arctic Cat Puma Z. Yeah, that brings back memories. Now, when I was a kid, we had a cheetah that had a very similar experience from this angle as far as the gas tank, the, the console there where the key and the tack is, and the handlebars. A little bit different, but very, very similar. Nice to see this. All right, let's walk around here and go down the other aisle and see what's waiting for us. Get a little music here. Hopefully, this doesn't give us a copyright strike. But we got some Kawasaki's all in a row over here. Eric Lozier, Kawasaki Interceptor, 1982, one of 600 made. Very nice. Also from Eric Lozier, 1982 Kawasaki Intruder. Well, it says Invader. The paper says Intruder. The sled says Invader. Here's an Intruder. Maybe maybe they're on the wrong sleds. Yeah, I think I think the tags got mixed up. It's an 81 Kawasaki Intruder, Eric Lozier. Also from Eric Lozier, a 78 Kawasaki Invader. Drifter. Very nice. We got some Edus here. And there's a whole row behind, too, that we're going to check out. Got all the sights and sounds of a vintage snowmobile show going on around us. <laughs> Not sure this is. This is from the Briggs family. 69 12 3. Everyone's first ride. And that's true that we. That was our first sled when I was a kid. Very similar to that. Another one from the Briggs family, a 63 Olympic. Got an old Elan, 71, also from the Briggs collection. 71 Elan, the first year of the Elan, 1971. Very cool. Got one with the ski boost in tow. It's an Olympic 335. I think in 69 or 70, maybe. 70, yeah. 1970. Also from the Briggs collection. Yeah, the Briggs collection is well represented today. So let's go down to the end and work our way back. Get some modern sleds and a groomer over here. It is on, kind of slippery here today, but we got some modern sleds behind over there, too. Let's see what we got here. Oh, Phil Bell. All right, I know him from Bethlehem, New Hampshire. 76 Arctic Cat, LT Gray. Very cool. He also has a serious collection of snow jets and a few other random items. He's over here. I don't know. I'm going to catch him for an interview, but... Day is still young, so we'll still probably catch a lot of these people for interviews. Also, Phil Bell, 1981 Arctic Cat, liquid cooled El Tigre. And we've got an Olympic over here. 69 Olympic, the Ice Angler seat. He walks in. All right, we're on uh, Facebook and YouTube going live. Do you feel like talking up your sled? No? Your husband's, all right. Well, that's all right. Well, I've got something for you anyway. Got a free DVD and an Amazon catalog. If I can reach it. There you go. Sure thing. Nice to meet you, Roxanne. Cool, 69 Panther. Cool. Now, they must have an aftermarket gas tank on that. Huh. 88 Yamaha Snow Scoop. Good again, good day. Sorry. How you doing? Good. I got something for you. Put a free DVD and an Amazon catalog. One for each of you. Thank you. 
Cool. Nice to meet you guys. Here we go. Now we're talking. Greg Rulo, 73 RT Cap Panther, 400. And I uh, love these old club stickers, the Snow Bees from Barry, Vermont. That's probably from back in the day. Also got an old retro helmet on the seat there. I'm going to go around for a closer look at that. I remember those helmets from back in the day. Not only do I remember them, I remember loving them. Yeah, we're going to go in for a closer look here. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That is my personal sweet spot. Party cats from the from 73 to 75, that's my personal sweet spot. Just they may not have been the fastest or what or whatever, but just the memories I have of those. This must be a cheetah, yes. Cheetah 340, probably a 73 or 74. 73. Museum quality. Dave Buska. Oh yes, I was talking to Dave earlier and uh I want to try to catch up with him to talk this sled up. I think we caught him last year to talk this up, too. Another one from Dave Busca, Yamaha Exciter, nine, uh, Tizer, I'm sorry, uh, 1979. Yeah, we're going to catch up with him to talk these up. Very, very nice. Ah, Timberland Machines. Now, this was the... Uh, That's the logo from the old Timberland racing team from back in the 60s and 70s. There's no tag on this snowmobile, so I'm not sure of the story, but I'm sure that what I can tell you is that I'm sure there is one. This is seen track time, I'm sure. Oh, very nice. Look what they've done here. I like that new uh, sign. Now, we see these Panteras at a lot of shows, and we talk with them quite often, Doug Gray, and and I think Jody was the missus. I think this is this might be a 79. That's a 76. Let's see, it's getting closer. Yeah, so this is a 79 Pantera 5000. I think this is a 76. <laughs> Very nice. I like what you've done with the ads and stuff. Looking great, man. Very cool. And this is. Nice. So this is Mr. and Mrs. Pantera over here <laughs> with the matching suits and everything. Gotta love it. You guys been well? Good. Yeah, good to see you both. Cool deal. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah. Did you ride over or trailer them over? Or trailer them? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, they're looking good. Yeah, it's always nice to see these. Cool deal. No. Oh, let me give you a uh, Got a free DVD and an AMSO catalog. Sure. Cool deal. Yeah, well, good seeing you guys. Take care. We'll catch up with you. Cool. Oh, now this 440 Cheetah, we had one exactly like that when I was a kid. That's got to be looked at. Electric start, too, just like we had. Yeah, I've got to circle around to that for sure. I cannot walk by that. So 1972 Polaris Colt 295 SS owned by Nathan Bedard. Get the old uh, Mont registration and VAS sticker. Always nice to see those retro stickers. Now we're competing with the music here now. This is also from Nathan Bedard, 1973 Hard to Cat LT Gray 340. Very nice. Oh, also from Nathan Bedard, the 72 Cheetah 440. Yes. Now we had one exactly like this when I was a kid. So many memories. In fact, this very sled is the reason I do this today. You know, all the videos and podcasts and everything. Yeah, our 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 gas tank was stainless, but I remember the battery there, and I remember with that battery there, you couldn't pull start it. You'd have to lift the hood to pull start it. But, yeah. Looks good from the back, too, just like I remember. Yeah. 
This just brings back a flood of memories. Oh, and I had the flying A right there. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's a quick pass of all the sleds. Let's see if we can catch up with a few people to do some interviews. So uh, the Kingdom Grill that we see in the background there, that blue building, uh, those are the nice folks that are hosting this event. Uh, so props to them and by all means uh, frequent that establishment if you're ever in the area. I've been in, I've eaten there a few times. The food is excellent, as is the ambiance and everything else. And, and they're into snowmobiles. They're modern and vintage. They host this show every year. This is the third annual. Uh, so if you're into this stuff, please support the people that support us, the vintage snowmobile community. That's exactly what they're doing here today. And please uh, show them some love if you're ever in the area. They have a Facebook page. I believe there's a link in the description. Be sure and check out their Facebook page, the Kingdom Grill. The entrance is over there on the left side, which faces the street. So that, that's the front. We're, we're actually at the side of the, the, the building. But uh, So let's see who we can catch for an interview here. Do you feel like talking up any sleds or, or just memories or any stories or tall tales? or Tall tales? Yeah. Are you implying that I am a source of tall tales? Infre infrequently. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, let's see, what should we talk about? Well, the sled that I'm showing today, which is a sure. Catch Panther in 90. Should we walk down there? Or? Yeah. And I've got an ulterior motor and walking down there, too, because we're competing with the music. Oh, yeah. So the further we are from the music, the better the audio will be. Yeah, but not exactly uh, elevator music. No. <laughs> But anyway, um, as you know, I'm mostly a rough guy, but uh, I've sold off a couple of my, my good ones, and recently I've been restoring a couple of things I had laying around for a long time, and this was one of them. Yeah. And it's kind of unusual in as much as it's a, a 90 cancer. But it's a mountain version. So that uh, back in 1990, you had a, a 136 inch track, three quarter inch paddles. That was a mountain. That was considered a lot. Yeah. Kind of funny. Sure. Uh, but this one is actually a, a little 440 Suzuki Fanner. Yeah. And it has a single carburetor. And um, it's in really nice shape. Yeah, let's get in closer for a look. So this is the 90 Panther he's talking about. With a longer track and tunnel and a two-up seat. Three-quarter inch paddle. Yeah, yeah sweet. Pretty amazing. And I love this one because it goes backwards. Oh, nice. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know, back in, in 1990, I mean, there were, there were people that had reversed, but. Uh, not a lot of them. It wasn't super common by then, no. So this one I used to pull a three-foot drag up around some of the lodges in, in Pittsburgh. And it uh, worked well. Nice. Good flotation. And yeah. Sweet. So uh, I got a call from, from Ray McCass. Do you want to go to that show at, at Island Pond? And I said, yeah. So here we are. Uh, three of us came down from Pittsburgh and and all brought sleds, and uh, it's. Uh, I think I was here the first year they were here, and it has grown dramatically, you know, which is kind of nice to see. And as you um, imply on your show, um, the growth of the vintage thing is, is pretty respectable, yeah, you know, and it's uh. It's getting bigger all the time, and I don't know if that's a direct result of the cost of new sleds, which you can spend 20, 
22 grand on now. Yeah. Uh, and you can still have a whole hell of a lot of fun to pick up a, a sled, put some some time in it and a, and a few bucks. Yeah. And, um, and make it look good and, and have it literally a piece of history. Yeah. I'm just coming over here because the wind was crossing that microphone. Oh, and uh, so with the wind behind me, but yeah, please continue your thought. Sorry. So, um, so this is one of, I'm, I'm not a cat fan to tell you the truth, but this is one of three of them I have. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of indicates how crazy I am. Sure. Now, as I'm looking at this, I see a retro cat hat. Did that come with, or is that something it you put on, on there? there when I got it? And I would assume that was, that was the stock. Well, no, I couldn't have bought it. Oh, it overlaps. This, the... is, this is the original sticker, and I think that was added. Sure. That was probably a one dollar option. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, what a lot of fun to ride. And if you ride on one of the contemporary new slabs like like the tool over there, yeah. they are getting so high it's almost like riding on a dirt bike. You yeah. Way up here, Center of gravity is different. Being on one of these, it's like being on a low rider. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So things have evolved altitudinally, yes. if that's a word. It is now. Okay. <laughs> that's, uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. And then this graphic here of the mountains cat, did that come with, or is that something that was put on after? Or? No, that was, that was the original sticker on it. So that's what they were trying to market it as? The mountain. Uh, 136 came on the mountain. And I think, um, if I remember correctly, the, the non-mountain version of the Panther in that genre um had a 121 inch sure on it so kind of cool when i got this it was pretty ratty looking and i did the uh, uh the seat over myself and a few other things and it, it nice. yeah it looks good have at least one. yeah and 4400 miles on it yeah and i think yeah. that's, that's probably lying because it hasn't worked in a while Okay, yeah, yeah. Sweet. And I see the reverse lever there. Very nice. And this is Ray's Polaris TX over here. Yeah. Uh, that gets a lot of interest because, because of the quality of the restoration that we've done on it. And that's Mark Belanger that did that, right? Correct. Yeah, he's one of the better restorers out there. Whitefield, yes. Yeah, Mark Belanger is one of the better restorers out there. It's fun right. sitting in the, in the trailer watching people go by and they'll glance at it and then they'll turn around and come back. <laughs> I'm really looking over. That's pristine. Yeah, that's, that's, it is a, nice. that's an exquisite example. 76, no less. Spirit of 76. I can remember uh, racing one of these. The first time I raced it, I was on the outside of the starting line. It took off, and I was probably in second or third or something. And the track was kind of so running. And somebody roosted me. <laughs> <laughs> and fucked me in the motor and killed a CD box. Oh, wow. About 100 yards at the race. Wow. <laughs> so there's a lot of times you'll see these in race. Oh, yeah. oh, a protective. Uh, stop the air, but to limit the amount of moisture that hits them. Yeah. Now, was that a vulnerable thing? The CD box on the on the seventy six Laris TX. Well, if you hit it with enough water, yeah. yeah. So I'll tell you why I ask, because we had a seventy six or seventy seven two fifty TX when I was a kid, and that's one of the things that went was the CD box, and we had a hard time finding one, and it was down for quite a while because of it. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. These are great handling sleds and very fast. He trail rides this, and I've, uh, I've been on a couple of vintage rides where he's been in the, you know, in the uh, forefront of it. It's something else to watch. I'll bet, yeah. Him and um, the one that Rick Rosebrook runs, which is uh, another one that Mark had done. Yes. And morphed into a. A PDC, which is yes. the name of the model, which is a snow problem. 
Yes. Beautiful. That is. Same kind of quality, same kind of look. Although the, the hood is a lot tighter. Yeah. Longer. Yeah, more tapered. Yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful sled. Yeah. Yes. Totally. So what do you have? I've only got one sled, and it's not modern or vintage. It's the 92 ski Doo Safari. Nice. So nothing special. Just a yard rider. But it doesn't have any miles on it. It runs great. Perfect yard rider. For the ones with the real rounded. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I had one of those. But for a while, I had a... Um, Touring service and a rental fleet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I had 25 sleds, and they were all mix and match kind of thing. And in that was a uh, a citation that was, you know, the same same body style. And it was some obnoxious color, uh, almost like a rose reddish thing. Sure, yeah. And it was almost in the front. You didn't have to worry about it. You knew yeah. You Wherever you're going, you're going to make it back. Yeah, very, very doable and perfect for a rental fleet, like you said. You know, oh, yeah. it can take the banging. And and, and you're right, too. I think the, um, the the Safari is the evolution of the Citation. True. Yeah. Yeah. Same kind of uh, logistics, you know, like in the build, and they were just refining things very slowly. Yeah. And I think they had some lady versions of that safari oh, yeah. because the one I've got originally had the pink, pink stripe, pink trim. And it's like, well, I don't know about that pink. If, if someone wants to ride like that, that's their business, but uh, not me. <laughs> so I, I, I taped it over and, and put a yellow, painted over that pink with yellow. Yeah. So ski do yellow, of course, you know, and now it's not a chick sled anymore, but it could be if it's, it's all who's riding it, I guess. Depends on the chick, yeah. Yeah, it depends on the chick, yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but cool deal. Oh, cool. Well, things are busy. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a wonderful turnout for this. This is wonderful. This reflects I positive. Know, I don't know if anybody's done a head count, but I mean, not a head count, but a, a number of sleds that are here. But I would, I took a count a little bit earlier, and a lot of a lot of sleds have come in since then. It looks like probably. I would guess, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And it's nice because a lot of these are, are people that end up going to a lot of shows and you bump into them, obviously. Yeah. And uh, it's nice to kind of keep up on, on things with people that you bump into every <laughs> once in five or six years, you know. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. And it's true. There's a lot of friends to be made in this community. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's ever growing and everybody's really nice. You know, uh, everyone you meet is really nice and friendly. And most people are happy to talk about their sleds and have stories to go with their sleds from back in the day, you know. Yeah. It's nice. I <laughs> Cool deal. Well, cool. Yeah, I appreciate it, Armin. Okay, take and, uh, care. Yes, we'll catch up with you. Bye-bye. <laughs> How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Good, clean fun, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm tickled. I'm, I'm glad to see the turnout. we got a really good turnout. There's got to be oh, 50, 60 sleds here. Right? Easily, yeah. yeah. And it, at least as many people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this reflects positively on the on this show. It re reflects positively on the community. Your show, and the, I got to tell you, Mike, I'm so happy with your show. It's oh, good. helped that ride out. It's helped that show out. It's it's unbelievable. So really, really appreciate it. Can't wait to be back on it with you again sometime. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's always fun having you on. Yep, thank we you. always have a good time. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> always yeah. a lot of people on here talking about it, too. So. For sure, yeah. 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 Yeah, and that's the nice thing. I think this vintage hobby in the community is a growing thing. You know, it's on a positive curve. Yep. Yep. It's nice to see that there's still interest in something, you know, from 50 years ago. Yep. That there's yep. still people interested in checking it out. And yep. not just us old farts who were there back in the day, but yep. there's plenty of, like, you look over here, there's young people. Yep. Yeah. And there's yep. whole demographic. I mean, it's awesome. And then um, I haven't talked to you since, but I've just been in touch with one board at the entrance of the Field Museum. Uh, looking to put together a Good idea. Um, so that people know where they all are, they can they can plan and, and try to make sure that the shows are on the same days and weekends. So 
because we're not in competition with each other. True, we're yeah. trying to make this thing grow. So. That's a great idea. And have like a one person who's kind of a clearinghouse for it so well, we can check with them to make sure there's not a conflict. And Yeah, we'll have it posted and, and try to get it out to all the different sites and have different contacts and then for each event we'll have contact information that we can reach out to get more specific stuff out there. So, good idea. Yeah, I think it's going to be something that's going to be beneficial to everybody. For sure. Yeah, because most of us, I don't think, want to miss one. No, you know, and it's always a head scratcher when there's like a co conflict when two events are on the same day. Well, which one? Are you? you know, yeah, like you said, keep putting it on. It's not different dimension to the double book. Sometimes it happens. Just a general lie, and, 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 and again, everybody wants to work together to make everybody show as big as they can possibly make it. Make it yeah, it's for mutual gain. Yeah, Bud's a great guy too, Bud Gordon. Yeah, yeah. super guy. Yeah, cool deal. All right. Yeah, this is great. Excellent turnout. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic turnout. A little bit cool, but it's fine. Yeah, we can make this work. Yeah. Yeah. Got the boys in the trail. There we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And speaking of, too, you know, we're talking about the younger generations. I don't see them now. My girlfriend and her, her adult sons are here in their 30s, and they love this stuff. Yeah. 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 So I, I wish they were here because I want to catch up with them and visit with them and maybe get them for an interview and see what it is yep. that appeals to them. That, is, and that would be awesome. And that's just to help other people understand the whole, you know, the, the addiction to this. Yeah. You know, what an addiction to have. For sure. <laughs> and it is, you're right. Addiction is the right word. It's very addictive. You go to one of these shows and you're hooked. You are. You want more, you know, and then you start looking at the calendar for other shows. Take a look what's coming in here. It comes to the neighborhood. See if it's gonna go by here for a better look. I don't think it's gonna come right out the front. Okay, yeah. We have our Kodak moment here. Oh, he's not doing it. How you doing? Good. Sorry, we saw you coming in. We couldn't resist. We're on. Uh, we're live right now on Facebook and YouTube. Do you feel like talking it up? Or? In fact, um, if you don't mind, I want to be on this side of you because we get the wind coming across the mic. Sure. But um, but yeah, just you know, kind of like my name is, and this is my. Yeah, my name is Brian Giuliano. Uh, this is my 2003 uh, Elite. It's a 1.5 liter uh, three-cylinder, two-passenger buggy that I bought out of uh, Western Quebec uh, back in 2017. So I've enjoyed this because it allows me to take the kids in it and whatnot with me when they're not in the mood to ride. What's nice. your name there, little guy? Hey, Joe. Nice to meet you. <laughs> cool deal. So this is uh, our boomer right here that we bring down for the show every year. Nice. Uh, show had a little COVID interruption, but we're back in full swing here for the antique sled show, and uh, we groom all the trails. We, we love helping out the Brighton Snowmobile Club, and I'm just part of the Derby Drift Duster Snowmobile Club, which is uh, just a little north and west of here, so just out today. Have a great time. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And I've got something for you for doing this. I've got a free DVD and an Amsoil catalog. Great. There you go. And then was there others in your party? Would you like one? All right. How about you, Joe? Would you like one? Yeah, this is cool. All right. Cool. Well, cool. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, very, very cool. I'll get this from different angles. Thank you. I appreciate it. All the stickers on it? Oh, yeah. All the stickers are on it. Oh, look at that. I love seeing that. My boat's like that. That's cool. <laughs> That's amazing. That is very cool. I love seeing that. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. That's cool. So, yeah, let's get a closer look here. So, it's an 03. Yeah, you don't see those every day. That is cool. Very cool. And I wanted to try to catch up with Dave Busca for an interview. 
I know he's over there. He's good, the guy with the Yamaha jacket talking to some people. Oh, three. Yeah. Very cool. I think that was the last body style for it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It looks almost kind of like Spacey or something. It, have that it still on. almost looks like it's modern. It does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Very cool. There's no trailing arms on that either, is it? No. No. Oh, no. is there? Oh, yes. Yeah. Kind of on the inside a little bit. Looking at the rest for an old three, that's uh modern technology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. This is awesome. Yeah, this sure is. They had the up in Pittsburgh guy that has the Bolins. Yes. He rode that the whole trail. Really? The whole ride? The whole ride. <laughs> that's amazing. It's incredible. It's incredible. And I think last year or the year before he got best of show with one of those in Lancaster yep. at yep. the Paul Grain yep. Show. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just unique, and, and uh, it's great to see some of the old sleds. The old blue, uh, I don't know what the name of that one is, but I've never seen one before. It's the first time I've seen one. Yeah, you're right. They had a Newport, the Newport Center show there a month or so ago, Did they? Yeah. and I don't, I don't recall the name of it either, yeah. but yeah, yeah, you don't see that very often. No, it's no. cool. And then to see the elite and some of the different sleds, even a little snow scoop. Yes. Pretty cool. Yeah. And I'll tell you the one that started this all for me, and the, and the reason that I do this, see that uh, 440 Cheetah on the end, the 72? Yeah. We had one just like that when I was a kid. Yeah. And that's the whole reason I do this, is the yep. memories of that. That's awesome. It, and that's, you know, the first show we did up in Pittsburgh is the same thing. It wasn't so much about all the old sleds. It was the stories about the old sleds. I had one of these. Where this is what we rode. This is where we went. It's great. This that is, is amazing. Great. The stories are priceless. The yeah. Sleds are beautiful. The sleds are all part of it. The stories are priceless. That keeps the whole thing alive. Keep the whole thing alive. That's why people get the sleds and put back together and do it again. Yeah. 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 So this is awesome. Yeah, for That's sure. Really awesome. For sure. And we had a '69 Panther kind of like that when I was a kid yeah. too. Yeah. And we had a. a, a TX like yours, it was a 250. Yep. I think it was either 76 or 77. It yep. had like, I think it was like a red and blue stripe on the hood. Yep. Yeah. It was had a little bit more blue in, in the stripe. Yes. And, and, and I had that's what I started with with the, the players. It's a 77 TX 250 that I used to race at uh, Mid Rosebrook and Monahan's Golf, who had the, the players franchise at the time. They were the ones that did all the work on the sled and kind of sponsored me. Wow. So yeah. It's pretty cool. Mitch is just another great guy. He sure I is. I wish he could have been up here for this too. So yeah. next year we'll get him up here. For sure. We got to get him out here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool deal. Awesome. Well, here's awesome. the guy in the gold coat here. Is He's one of her sons, my girlfriend's sons. Oh, right here. Yeah. 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 I don't know if he, how, how he's going to feel about coming on camera. but yeah. <laughs> And their other son was around here somewhere, but I don't see him now. But yeah. he, maybe he just came and went. I'm not sure. But. Person. Yeah. Paul yes, Paul Belfe. Yeah, I don't know he is. Who he looks like, but I know he's got those two Yamahas, and I, I yeah. chat with him on Facebook once in a while, but I haven't met him yet. Because he's wearing like Yamaha, kind of like like older Yamaha with like the. He's got a Yamaha hat too, like a two. No, no, that's Dave Buska. Um, but older, like late seventies, kind of Yamaha colors in his jacket. I don't see him because I know he was sitting in his truck earlier because it was cold. Oh, yeah. But yeah, he'll be back, yo. yeah, he's a super guy. Yeah, I, I want to be him and talk to him too. Met a lot of people fact, on Facebook. That but. Toyota over there is where he was sitting. Can you tell if somebody's sitting in that? Yeah. Okay, so that might be him. You may want to tap on his window and yeah. step out of the car, if please. It's not him, I'll freak him out. <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to wind this down here in a couple minutes. I don't know, but yeah, why don't you? Because I'm going to wrap this up here in a minute. Right. Say hi, Ben. Cool. Yes, we'll catch up with you. Yeah. You were for a second. Just give a quick wave. <laughs> nice. Is Nick still here? I saw him go by. Oh, he's in the restaurant? All right. Cool. Did the kids come? or No, just Nick? Cool. All right, yeah, I'll catch up with you. I'll be, I'll be over in a few minutes. All right, so that's my cue. I'm going to wind this down here. What? Like a burger with a lettuce as a bun? Okay. With plenty of onions, 
tomatoes, lettuce, if they got it. Cool. Thank you. I'll be over in a few minutes. Oh, and I see Joey LeCare over there. They used to have the races at Groveton at his racetrack. I think he sold that racetrack. And he owns LeCare's uh, Motorsports or something. LeCare, he's a he sells boats. And oh, I see someone else I know too. Brad? How are you doing? Good. Mike LaPierre. Good to see you, man. Yeah, live Stuff. Yeah, and it gets better every year. Because uh, like those DVDs I gave you a few years ago, yeah. are pretty rough around the edges. Yeah. But this is my latest. Yeah, it's it's evolves constantly. There's a free DVD and an Amsoil catalog. But the the video stuff is getting much bigger, getting a good following and stuff. And nice. I do a I'm podcast. You on, uh, Facebook. Yeah, oh, good. Yeah. Some interesting stuff. Good. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'm glad you're still you're out there still supporting the you know the sport. Yeah. Yeah, yeah trying to promote it. it. <laughs> Definitely. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. And uh, cool deal. Did you want you sure you don't want to do a shameless plug for your business? No, no okay, <laughs> I understand. Anyway. sure. But uh, I won't put you on camera, but I'll just say this gentleman I'm talking to your dad and my dad were very good friends from when they were kids, and you and I have known each other since we were little kids. Yeah, so yeah, well, cool. Yeah, great seeing you, Brad. Yeah, you too. All right, All take right. care, man. Yeah. Is this a good time for you, Dave? Yeah. Do a quick interview. Um, cool. Yeah, come on over. All right. Yeah, I mean, how do you want to? How do you want to use it? I'm gonna be on this side if you can, just so the because the wind's gonna be behind me or the mic it'll cross the microphone and make all kind of noise. Gotcha. But uh, so I'm looking for basically just you know my name is sure yeah if you want to set it down or whatever. How's it going, Joey? Good. Nice to see you. Cool. Sure. Oh, let me give something for you guys. I got a free DVD. Whoops. Let me give you one with a catalog. Yeah, one free, free DVD and an Amazon catalog. Yes, very welcome. Always got one. All right, I'll take one back. Sure. Well, good seeing you, Joey. Oh, let's do a shameless plug. What's the name of your business over there? What is it, East Montpelier, is it? LaCares with Motorsports? Power sports, yeah. Claris dealer, and you sell boats. And nice, East Montpelier. So just, so just look it up on Facebook or YouTube, and. Nineteen sixty. Wonderful. That's cool. And it's L A Q U E R R E apostrophe S, right? Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to see you, Joey. Take care. There we go. COVID handshake. <laughs> Take care, Joey. So we we'll just uh, take a moment here. We're going to catch up with Dave Buska in a minute for an interview, but he's talking to some people here. But yeah, that was cool seeing Joey look here. <laughs> See, even dogs enjoy it. Oh, did I give you guys a free DVD yet? No. Would you like one? Is that a free DVD? It's a vintage snowmobile podcast I do. 
And there's an AMSOIL catalog in there. I got one for you as well here. If I can get together. All right. Cool. Sure. Thank you. So yeah, we're just chilling out. Uh, let's see if anyone's made any comments while we're waiting here. There we go. We've got some comments coming in. Let's pull them up on the screen. We've got Richard Springer, greetings from Minnesota. We've got John Springer Jr., a good friend of mine, saying good morning. John Corrick saying rumps all the way. Absolutely. Got our good friends Stacy and Art Fosler from Platkill, New York, saying hello. And we've got our John Springer Jr. saying great show. Now we've got someone else on Facebook saying, nice day for a vintage show. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, thank you everyone for those wonderful comments. We do appreciate it. And we're just chilling out here waiting to get a moment with Dave Buska to talk up his sleds. And uh, yeah, we're just chilling out and having a good old time at the, at the snowmobile show. We're in Island Pond, Vermont, by the way, in the northeast kingdom of Vermont. And that blue building in the background there, that's the Kingdom Grill. These are the nice people putting on this show. This is their third, third annual vintage snowmobile show. And I do ask them, ask you if you're coming to Island Pond, Vermont, to patronize them because they patronize us, the vintage snowmobilers, by putting on a show like this every year. They do a lot to support the community, the snowmobile, modern snowmobile and vintage snowmobile community. And we like to uh, repay that favor by patronizing their business, which I'm going to be doing here in a few minutes, going over there and have something to eat. But, um, yeah, just shout out to the Kingdom Grill. They're the ones that have made this all possible today. Uh, if you're ever going through Island Pond, Vermont, please stop by and have a meal or a drink. And, uh, yeah, tell them you're a snowbiller if you go in there. They would love to hear that. And tell them you saw it on the podcast. But... Uh, All right, so I think I'm going to just catch up with him a little later. I'm going to wind down the podcast. So let me see if I catch Phil Bell. How you doing, Phil? Good, good. You got any sleds you feel like talking up? Or? No, I don't have anything great here today. I was going to bring my snow truck, but it's sure. a different truck. Sure, that's right. You had a sled down here, I think. Yeah, the two cats. The two cats on the end there, yep. Yeah. Nice. You want to do a shameless plug for your, your fall show? I don't have a date yet. Oh, you yeah, don't? Okay. Yeah. All right. We were just talking today. That we're going to put Gordon and a bunch of us are going to put a roster together with all the shows so everybody knows what's coming. Great idea. Yeah, Ray Lacasse was just telling me about that. That's a fabulous idea. We've got to put everything on our paper and get it on the internet so we know people can plan their, their winter, you know? Yeah, this for is sure. almost something to do every, every week. Yeah. That makes the winter a lot more fun, too, if you've got a vintage event every weekend, every weekend you know? That's uh, we went to the pro ride, that was really good. And one pretty much every week. Nice, so we'll be, but we don't want to be on somebody else's, weekend. yeah, stepping on each other's toes. Yeah, right. this was a nice way to get organized with that. We for don't sure. want two events, you know, one on Saturday, one on Sunday, the same weekend. That's hard for people, yes, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Much for sure, yeah, so and then. Good. Then even though you don't have a date, you do a, a, a fall event every year in Bethlehem, New Hampshire. Yes, October. Yeah. Usually it's the first weekend in October. But Still working that out. Now, yeah. So working those details out. Stepping on something else. Sure. And that's a good show, too. Show in next one. Yes. Nice. It's a good time to do it. It's not cold out. Yeah. Sell some parts. 
Yeah, that's nice to walk around when it's a little more comfortable. The temperatures, you know, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, and that's a nice spot you've got there for that. And then also for people who enjoy cars, you do a cruise night every what? Every other Thursday? Okay, every other Thursday is it? Yeah, in Bethlehem, New Hampshire. Yeah. Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. Cool deal. Very important. And then, do you feel like doing a shameless plug for your business, Beach Hill Automotive? Well, yeah. Beach Hill Auto is involved in too many things. <laughs> yes. Car shows, cruises, movies, snowmobiles. Yeah. We're busy all the time, but we got a good field. We got a good spot to do the events. Yeah. But you do with Beach Hill Automotive. You do restorations of muscle cars, classic cars, things like that. We work on a lot of classics. Yeah. That's Wonderful. What we specialize in. Unfortunately, you have to do everything else too. Yeah. Once uh, show car season starts, we'll be, cars will be rolling in. Yeah, I look forward to that. Yeah. For sure. And if someone's curious about it, just search for Beach Hill Automotive in, in uh, Bethlehem, New Hampshire. Yeah. We have on Facebook, Facebook or YouTube. And, we yeah. have a new website coming. Oh, good. Yeah. Nice. Well, cool. Well, I appreciate it. Okay, right. Nice Thank to you, see buddy. you. Take care. All right, buddy. <laughs> Take it easy. All right. So he's, let's see if I can catch him. Excuse me. So yeah, we, he and I keep ending up in conversations with other people here. But uh, is this a good time? Or? Hey, Mike. All right, sorry. Oh, did I give you guys a DVD yet? No. All right. Well, let me fix that. DVD and a free Amazon catalog. Oh. It's a podcast. Would you like one too? No, I already got You good? All right, cool. I'll bring you guys this year. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Whoa, slippery. Slip sliding away like Paul yeah, Simonson. Right. I don't see anybody go down yet. But yeah, somebody's yeah. going. Yeah, it is slippery out here. But yeah, whenever you're ready, just, you know, I'm Dave Buska. And uh, how do you want to. Uh, just like, you know, I'm Dave Buska, and this is my, you know, yeah. just like you're telling a friend about it. Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, and uh, we're here at the third annual uh, Snowmobile Vintage Show here in Island Pond. Uh, some of the people here have made it for three years. Uh, I'm fortunate that I'm one of them. I've met some great people here. Uh, Mike, our, our host, uh, uh, producer of this, uh, always does such a fine job. So thanks for coming by, Mike. Thank you. Uh, so uh, last year, uh, came up here one machine, just to give a little history here, uh, on the sled that has been brought up here. But I uh, come up here uh, last year with uh, this 1973 uh, Cheetah, which is all original. And I um, was fortunate enough to walk away with a trophy uh, last year. Wow. So, great, uh, great turnout. Lots of people here, lots of variety of sweats. Uh, Hello, I just did this year. 79, 340, ET 340, that's 100% original. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we decided to add that in. It's not quite something to show a sled like the Arctic Cat Cheetah. But um, anyway, it's a good show, great turnout. And um, there's a uh, about to be uh, Mike, that you'd like to ask about, I'd be happy to share them. Uh, a lot of sleds here. Yeah, I can't think of anything, but I sure like that vintage suit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, it's, uh, I don't think I'll put it on, uh, but, um, it's like, what? Uh, sure. But, yeah, thank you. Uh, the windshield, the windshield, the windshield, the windshield, the windshield. Oh, yes, yeah, so yeah, I remember those yeah. back in the now, day. That here is wearable. Yeah, so that one is wearable. I remember those. <laughs> I remember these, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but thank you, uh, for being here. Uh, I'm going to comment on your, uh, show that it's always such a fun, uh, time to join. A lot of interesting people from around the country that join that, your, uh, your podcast. Yes. And, uh, I, uh, just once again, thanks for having that. Thanks for coming by and saying hello. 
Thank you. I appreciate that you're interested in it and that you like it. I appreciate that very much. Excellent job. Excellent coverage. Great subject. Cool. Uh, on your show. I appreciate that. Cool deal. All righty. Cool. Dave Buskey, everybody. Yep. Thank cool. you. Thank you. All righty. And with that, we're going to... Island Pond. Yes, from Island Pond, Vermont. We're going to wind down the live podcast. Thank you, everyone who's... Oh, here we go. we got a Kodak moment here going by. Let's see if we get a shot of this. That's good times right there. Cool deal. Well, with that, we're going to wind down the live podcast. Thank you, everyone who's been viewing, and also everyone here. We're having a wonderful time. Wish you could be here. And if you're not here today, try to try to join us next year. All right, everybody. Have a great day.